seat from Robert Stork, and there will be the demos. The demos, uh, yep. Johnny started here at Washington College, was a soccer player, and he's been here for the last three years, so you may recognize him. Uh, I would say this, as far as anything that I count on helping my team be competitive, it's him, it's his brain, it's what he knows, and what he helps us. When we first started the process of working with Johnny three years ago, mm -hmm. it was pretty much us and maybe one or two other teams, and we just latched on. It's great. And now, boy, you can't even get on this, this on this schedule. I had to play this almost a year ahead. Uh, certified trainer with what's the organization? The uh, NSCA and uh, NASM. Uh, and then I have my master's in exercise science. Thank you, uh, thank you for having me. Basically what we've d designed up here kind of looks a little bit like a circus, but um, the idea is I've come in years past the, uh, saying, uh, the saying all about the core for our, for our little 18 minute presentation, but this year I'm thinking, okay, what do you guys have in a boathouse that you could utilize? And the idea is, okay, everybody has a medicine ball. You could somehow get a box, some shape or height, and you can get something in the relationship of a barbell what we have here is a wonderful barbell made with coffee cans and cement. So, you know, it's unique tools that you could use in a boathouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to just demonstrate through those four different materials how we can, how we can utilize them. And one, one of the other things, obviously, is body weight. So we're going to start out with our body weight, and we're going to start out with what we call just a bit regular plank. So we're going to have these two wonderful people hop down, forearms and toes, nice and down solid. From their shoulders to their feet, they're nice and in line. Okay, it's not only working their abdominals, it's also working their lower back. It's working their shoulders. It's working their whole hip and basically what we call the lumbopelvic hip complex. So this is a very beginner exercise that you can do with any of your rowers that will strengthen up their core. Well, we can vary this as much as we want. So we can bring up one foot and just balance. And then we can switch feet. And we can open and close our feet. So now we're working different parts of our hip flexors and our core as well. And then we can go up into a push-up. So now we're working our shoulders. And then back down into a plank, so we're working our core again. So a variety of things that you can do just in this little, small little exercise. Now that we get into more of an advanced level, we can go into a side plank. So they open up with their top hand coming up, hips are driven up, hips are driven forward, and then they can bring their top leg up. So they bring their top leg up and they balance. And once again, it's developing this core strength, not only for the center of their abs, but for their transverse, for their obliques, for everything around there. That's their center of their body, their center of gravity. Okay, rest for a sec, guys. That's basically the plank and body weight. So we can, we can take a variety of things just with this small little exercise, and they do it all the time. Okay, so now we're going to grab a medicine ball, and we're going to just show a couple of the medicine ball exercises that we do. So we're going to start out with a Russian twist. So we're going to hop down on the floor. It's just a rotational exercise with their core. Feet are together, and they're just going from side to side. Now you can advance this as well. Stork is picking the ball up over his head, getting a little bit of shoulder activity in, involved as well, keeping his body in line so he's focusing once again on that core and that solid body. Good and relax. We can adjust this to a variety of different exercises using the core as well. So you could take... You know, if you don't have an eight-pound medicine ball, you could use a basketball, you could use a soccer ball, you could use something like that uh, that's, that's useful in your boathouse. So we're going to do a straight-legged crunch with our legs out straight. Now we're just going to tap our backs to the floor and come straight up with our ball. So come straight up, that's it, and then right back down. And it's nice and controlled, extending that body, similar to what you would do in the boat, just nice and controlled and balanced. Now, when we get more into the advanced level, we'll do a V-up. So we'll have the ball back behind the head, and we'll recruit the legs as well. So Val's doing a nice V-up right there, bringing the upper body up. And now Stork's doing a V-up as well, too. And you can do different variations to it. You can do a single leg. So you can bring up one leg, and then you can alternate and relax. Good. Now, this can also be adjusted as well, and we can use it for strength development in the upper body. So we can just do a basic push-up on it with one hand on the ball. So we'll do a basic just push-up. And then you can roll it across and do it right on the other side. Or you can even balance like Stork is doing, and he's just balancing, gets that core activated, 
and then adds a push-up into it. So a variety of things that is all done in a small little space that's easy, and you can do it with a good quantity of individuals. Relax, guys. Okay, now from the body weight and the medicine balls, we're going to move to the box a little bit. And we're going to do some things on the box. So the box, you'll see these in a lot of different boathouses. I know we have big, tall, wooden ones in our boathouse. Um, but we're going to do a couple of different things. We're going to do what we call step ups and step downs. A step up, they're just going to come right up onto the box with a knee drive. So coming straight up, and they're going to balance. And then they're right back down, and they switch. So the idea, when they're up there and they're holding this, the initial push up is all through the quadricep. So it's the same type of movement that you would get when you're down in that boat coming up, that drive face. So when you come back down, you have that activation of the hamstring and the posterior chain when you come down. So drive up one more time. Now from here, they're going to send back their leg into a nice little what we call an RDL, or a single leg deadlift. And now they're getting even more of their posterior chain. They're getting their ankle flexibility that Fred talked about as well. And they're getting that nice inline body. So coming back up and then switch for me. So come back down and then just do a switch with that single leg RDL. And just balance, focus on the balance. It's all mental. We talk a lot about breathing, a lot about focus. Everything has to do similar to what you have to do in the boat. OK, and relax. Now, Stork does a great job on what we call a single leg step down. We've developed this more for rehab for the knees. So ACL injuries, that type of thing, it develops what we call the vastus medialis oblique, the inside muscle in your knee. So it's just a basic step down. But if you look, Stork kind of applies a little bit of a stroke to it as he comes back up. Go ahead and do a little step down as well. Val's on a little bit more of a box, so she has a little bit more of a challenge. But at the same time, very balanced, very flexible. Single leg things are great, even for the rower when they're constantly pushing off at of two feet. It develops a lot more strength in each of the legs as well. OK, from here, we're going to go to a uh, Bulgarian split squat. So Bulgarian split squat, they're just going to move the barbell away a little bit. And once again, this is going to develop ankle flexibility. And it's going to develop a lot of quad strength. So they come out nice and solid with their body. Body's position is straight. Shoulders are retracted. Chest is out. And they come straight down and then right back up. You can do this in a variety of different ways. You can hold dumbbells. You can put the bar on your back. It's a variety of exercises to make it more challenging. Go ahead and switch the leg. Now, it's not only working the ankle flexibility here, but it's also working the quadricep on the leg that's balanced on the box. So it's giving that flexibility, but at the same time, really producing that single leg strength that you want. Some very common exercises. Nice job. OK, relax. OK, now we're going to go to the big uh, barbell. So these barbells are 45 pounds. They vary. Most uh, female barbells are right around 25 pounds. Most, males are about, most male barbells are about 45 pounds. Or if you were to do a coffee can with cement, you're going to have to weigh it yourself and figure it out. Um, so we're going to start out with just a basic upright row. So body's straight. Arms are positioned a little bit closer in. And they're going to come straight up with the elbows above the shoulders, just nice and comfortable. This develops the shoulders, it develops the delts, the traps, as well as the whole upper section of your shoulders and your back. OK, nice job. And relax. And just go ahead and put the bar down. Next up, we're going to do what we call a bent over row. Bent over row, a little bit more technical. You really have to focus on proper technique using the barbell, not to emphasize the back or, or hurt the individual while they're, they're doing it. So go ahead, bring that bar up. Hips are retracted. Knees are slightly bent. Chest out. Good. And now you're rowing it up. Good. Nice and solid. This is getting more of the lats, the side portion of your back. Good. Nice and strong. Val's doing a great job. That's 45 pounds. That is no slouch right there. Good. And relax. Good. Nice job. Nice job. OK. Now we're going to go from the upper body now. And we're going to work the posterior chain a bit. You don't realize how important hamstrings and glutes are. They are essential for everything that you do. 
all the power and engagement that you have in your quads, your hamstrings play a huge part, as well as your glutes. So we're going to do what we call just a two-legged Romanian deadlift. So it's basically similar to what we did on the box with that single leg. Now it's just two. So let's bring that bar back up, nice and comfortable. Good. Shoulders retracted, chest out. Now hips come down, but the eyes stay forward the whole time. So go ahead, guys. One rep. Good. And they should feel it all through their posterior chain as they pull back up. Once again, through their posterior chain. They hold that neutral position in the back with it nice and slightly arched. And that way it won't cause their back to fold over and slump and cause that pressure on their low back. So a couple more reps for me. Good. Nice job. A couple more. And one more. Good. And now we're going to bring that bar over onto our back. And we're going to work a little bit on squats and one of these things that Fred talked about a little bit. Once again, we need to have our feet shoulder width apart, our toes a little bit angled out just slightly just to help out with a little bit of ankle flexibility. And we're going to sink down to 90 degree knee flexion, OK? Sink down. Good. Nice and solid and right back up. Good. One more time. Good. And right back up. Good. Two more. Good. And relax. Good. Put that bar back down. <coughs> These guys are doing a great job up here right now. But the, uh, the squats are great. You just want to make sure technique is perfect. You always want to focus on technique with your rowers. It's the most important part of weightlifting, too. It avoids those injuries. So from here, we're going to go to a very more dynamic and explosive exercise, a power clean. So there's a couple of different positions of a power clean. There's one from mid-thigh, one from above the knee, one from below the knee, and then one from the floor. We're going to do just the one from above the knee right now. This is the one that should be mainly done by high school athletes. It should, you should develop them and make sure that they get good flexibility in all the other components before you would add this lift in. So Stork, bring up that weight for me. And he's just going to power through his shoulders and his legs and come right up into that power clean. So it's nice and comfortable. He has good flexibility through everything. He uses his shoulders. And he's got it racked nice and solid on his shoulders right there. So bring it down, and let's do one more. Good. Nice job. One more. If you watch, his explosion through his legs is where he's generating all that force. This isn't an upper body exercise. This is a leg exercise. That's where you're going to get all your power and your explosion from. And relax. So we're going to go, I'm going to touch a little bit on, I went fast through this for a purpose. Uh, we're going to touch a little bit uh, on the ankle flexibility like uh, Fred was going through as well. If you're having those issues with your athletes, you can do a couple of adjustments. Um, like, uh, like a lot of you said, you know, I have, I have really over-contracted lats for myself. My back is really over-contracted. So when I squat, I lean really far forward. You know, this is not too comfortable for me. And it's just one of those things that I have to adjust to. So a great little position that you could do is you could take just an inch piece of plywood, or you can take a plate, and you can put your heels underneath of it, and you just squat down. And now it's nice and comfortable for me. Okay, my ankle flexibility, I'm still getting that ankle flexibility. Obviously, I'm not working it to the point where I'm flat on the ground. But this will, start, this will be a starting point for where you can take your athletes. They can do this for a while, and then we can start, OK, we can start getting them onto the ground. Okay, but I was about to fall over. So that's just one thing that you could do with flexibility as well. The, the Bulgarian split squats, where you have that single leg up on that box, you're going to have that flexibility too. Um, and I wanted, to, I, I, I wanted to speed through this quick, because I know there's always a lot of questions to strength and conditioning. So I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about uh, reps, volume, what you're doing now with your athletes, and hopefully I can help uh, talk to you in, in a couple of different lights regarding that. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, how, how can I, I think I understand what you mean, but how can I phrase it differently? Yeah. Shoulders back, chest out. Okay. Shoulders back, chest out. That's just basic posture. Shoulders back, chest out. Back in a nice neutral position. It's just nice and arched, just like you would be standing up nice and tall. Okay. Yes. Mm hmm.
Yeah, I think, I th uh, you know, I think this, it's, it's all about what you're doing in terms of flexibility. I think one of the biggest things, if you have a contracted back, okay, now you actually got to stretch that back. So the idea is, you know, take a tennis ball, take, you know, basic tennis ball, put it on the lats of your athletes and have them just roll their lats out a little bit. And then you'll find that they'll actually be able to keep their back a little straighter and squat down a little bit further based on that idea that their arms aren't going to be falling forward or their back isn't going to be folding over. It's all that contraction just trying to release all that tension that they have. Yes? Um, I would say 15, at least 15 minutes. Like if you can spend more, great, but like 15, 15 minutes before or after practice, it really doesn't matter, um, especially for, because you're, like you said, you're pressed for time. So if you, can, if you can get them in early and get 10 to 15 minutes in, that's great. And if you can get them after practice for that 15 minutes, that would be fantastic as well. Mm hmm Well, if you're looking at prisoner squats or if you're looking at any deep squat, that's actually more of a dynamic. Like if you think about, if you think about constantly coming up and down into a squat, that's more dynamic because your muscles are contracting and loosening the whole time. Um, but uh, I always say dynamic at the very beginning of a workout. Always dynamic. No static whatsoever because it elongates the muscle, it weakens it. Okay? Static is fine after a workout. Always after, never before or during. You know, the idea is somebody coming down and touching their toes beforehand, okay, then they're just stretching out their muscles. And it's not going to help them in the boat when they're constantly contracting. They've got to they gotta warm up those muscles, that blood flow, with more dynamic things that they're going to be doing in the boat in about 10 minutes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I've still got some time, so... Volumes, reps, any questions on it? How many of you do any sort of weight training... Uh, how many of you do any sort of weight training off the water on your own for high school kids? How many of you do power cleans? Okay. How do you, uh, Andrew, how do you feel on your power cleans? Do you feel like they're good technique or are they, are they strong? Uh, it took them a while to actually learn the technique. And we actually are lucky enough to have strength in the Okay. So uh, he reduced that to very slowly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Yes. Bench press. Yes. Um, well, I think bench press is going to be at least a little bit vital because if you think about everything else that you're doing in your exercises, you know, a lot of it's all contracting the back. So you have to work those chest muscles. You have to work that front side of your body as well. So those are important as well. Uh, don't don't just completely ignore them. You know, it's important to make sure that you have almost an even posture front and back. Yes? Hip flexibility is going to come with all your squatting. Uh, it's going to come with the variety of the single leg movements that I showed. So all of those, all of those will help as well. Yes? To improve back strength? Yeah, um, I think uh, upper back strength, you could do a variety of things on the medicine ball. Um, Stuart, just step on this medicine ball and just hold the medicine ball for you, for me in a push-up position. That right there is developing a lot of upper back strength because he's, he's holding that ball and stabilizing while it's developing his core, but it's really stabilizing his back as well. So it's just some, a simple thing like that or, you know, a push-up. Push-up is chest and back, you know, every, everything included, so. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and all of the all of these things it's it's essential to your core, to your balance, and it'll translate all to the boat. That's the biggest thing. Yes. Uh, 
Um, I think you know. It, do, would, do you have do you have access to a leg press machine or anything like that, or, or are you just looking for? You know, I think a leg press does demonstrate it well, but at the same time, the leg press doesn't get that ankle flexibility that you need that you would get from a deep squat. So I, you know, you can do a variety of single leg things like we. Sh we showed you can do a variety of different squatting positions. So if they can only get to here right now, that's okay. You know, and this is good for now, but just constantly get them further and further down and, and more comfortable. Yes. Absolutely. They're slow twitch muscles. They, they're slow twitch muscles. They're fine. You can do it every day of the week. No, no, core body weight, body weight training, any of that stuff, do it every day. Do it every day. Yeah, we we have a strength and conditioning website online um, through our athletic website. Um, you can also, uh, I think I put my information on that sheet that I gave you as well. So that's on there. Feel free to email me, ask me questions, anything. You know, I'll, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs>